Okay, thanks a lot for the introduction and in particular for the invitation to give a course here. As you can see, I'm supposed to represent the probabilistic part of the theory. And I understand, meanwhile, that most of you have a strong background in analysis, geometry and so on, but probably not so much in uh, probability or high-tech probability. So, uh, when thinking yesterday in the plane about how to structure my lectures, I got a bit worried. Uh, and I still don't know how to achieve everything which I am supposed to accomplish. But anyway, uh, I think uh, uh, it's good uh, to be as elementary as possible, at least for, for the non uh, probabilists and I will focus on the main picture, so on, on ideas and not so much on technical uh, uh, details. Well, uh, to get started, it's probably good to talk about stochastic flows. Well, just to uh, fix my notation, so for me M will always be a differentiable manifold. So C infinity, I'm not worried about uh, technical details. Everything is smooth in my uh, uh, course. And uh, pi will be the tangent bundle. Yeah, so uh, just uh, think of uh, Tm as the disjoint union of all tangent uh, spaces and uh, so pi on Txm will just give us x. Yeah? And my notation for vector fields, well, uh, these are just the sections of uh, this uh, bundle, so these are the mappings from M to the tangent bundle. Well, as I said, the tangent bundle is just this, but you can give it a differentiable structure. So these are C infinity maps uh, such that A pi give you the identity on M. Yeah? And of course, uh, this just means that this vector you have at the point x lies in the tangent space to this point. So for each point you just uh, fix uh, a direction. And uh, as usual I'm considering uh, vector fields just as derivations. So uh, these are for me just mappings from C infinity M to uh, C infinity M, uh, which are R linear, so R derivations in, uh, uh, on C infinity M, which means that A of FG, so if I take a product of uh, two functions, I will get F a g plus g a f for all f and g. Yeah. So uh, the usual identification is how uh, what is a applied uh, to a function. Uh, well, this should be a function on m. So at the point x, this will be just take this tangent vector and transport it with the differential of f. Yeah? So you get something lying in R. OK. Well, of course, there's a dynamical point of view. So to vector fields, you have uh, always uh, flows. So flow to a 
to a vector field uh, A. Well, the idea is uh, the following. You look at curves taking values uh, in M such that you start at the given uh, point X in M and then the derivative at uh, a time uh, uh, t, so at time t you are in the point x of t, it's just the direction you have at x t given by uh, your vector field. So this here uh, is usually denoted, uh, let's say, phi t of x. And uh, so we call phi dot of x, uh, which maps t to phi t of x, uh, an integral curve or flow curve uh, starting at x. Well, you may wonder why I am doing this so explicitly, but you will see uh, in some minutes when I switch to uh, uh, the probabilistic uh, part. Uh, well, uh, so uh, this just means uh, that the derivative of uh, phi uh, t is A of phi t and uh, phi uh, zero is the identity on M. Yes? So uh, if you like, then phi t is just E t of A. Yes? And uh, as usual, you will see later on when talking about things on manifolds, I will always uh, scalarize things uh, by pushing it back to Rn, so by composing things with functions, and in particular test functions. So uh, this here just means for each f on uh, a function on M, let's say of uh, compact uh, support, we have, if we compose phi t with f, uh, Yes, then we have a curve in R, we take the derivative of that, then uh, we get the vector field as derivation applied uh, to F composed with uh, phi uh, t, and of course phi, phi zero is just F, yes? Uh, well, this is clear because if you uh, apply the differential here uh, on uh, both sides, uh, so we have d dt phi t equals a of phi t, we apply uh, the differential at phi t on both sides. Well, then uh, this here uh, by the chain rule is nothing but uh, the derivative of f composed with phi t. And here, as uh, I uh, just explained, uh, this is nothing else than a applied to the function f composed with phi t. Yeah? So this is all uh, uh, quite uh, uh, standard. Or, uh, it's just for the sake of uh, the uh, notations. So in other words, let me write it a bit differently, because then you can see how I am going to generalize it. So for each test function uh, on M, I have that f of phi t of x minus f of x minus the integral from 0 to t 
a uh, of f uh, phi uh, let's say s x uh, ds that this here is zero for each t uh, positive. You may wonder why I'm taking test function here. It's just uh, to avoid uh, difficulties with explosion because uh, the corresponding flow line may explode in finite times and I will never have trouble if I compose it with something of compact support because uh, when the trouble starts I'm outside of uh, the support of the test function. Well, uh, so the first question I would like to uh, address uh, is the uh, question uh, is there also uh, a flow to uh, a second order operator. Okay, I yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, okay. So, uh, on M. Of course, uh, well, uh, we know, uh, explained or recalled uh, how to do this with a vector field, but now let's suppose uh, that we have an object of the type L equals a uh, zero plus a sum of squares of vector fields. Well, usually vector fields are written as uh, x, uh, but for probabilist x are stochastic processes, so already to avoid confusion, my vector fields are already capital A's, capital B's, or something uh, like that. Yeah? So, for instance, uh, if you are on uh, uh, Rn, take a0 zero equals 0 and ai equal dxi then you get uh, the standard Laplacian well you may say this is a stupid question so what uh, should this mean a flow to uh, such uh, uh, an operator so my question is uh, is there is there a flow uh, to L? Well, uh, surprisingly, the answer is yes. Uh, even if I have not explained yet what I mean uh, by that. But we have to pay some price, namely the generalization of uh, integral curves or flow lines now uh, depend on an additional parameter which is random so they are depending uh, on random and in addition, they are usually very irregular as functions of t. So they are no longer differentiable as functions of t. Yeah, so very irregular as functions of t. But otherwise, uh, you uh, can do uh, exactly the same things as before. So, uh, before... Okay, it might be... A... So now I shall use uh, the notation for this uh, object phi t x, so here it depends on random, I write x t of x, yeah, which is now a stochastic process.
So a stochastic process is just a random variable for each t, but indexed by points uh, in uh, m. Yeah? Well, so to be a bit more formal, I should uh, give you a precise uh, definition. So we have now some underlying probability space. Usually I denote this omega f and p. So uh, p is a probability measure, f is a sigma algebra. And as usual in stochastic analysis, there will be a filtration of sub-sigma algebras. Yeah, so this object is called a filtered probability space. So it uh, just means that you have a normal uh, probability space and each of the FTs is a sub-sigma algebra of F. And uh, the FTs are increasing. So. Uh, if S is less uh, or equal than T, then F of S will be included in F uh, uh, T. So th the interpretation is these are the events observable up to time T. Yeah? Yes, so all observations you can make up to now, for instance. Yeah? So if you are talking about weather forecasts and T is today, then you have all measurements from yesterday, day before, and so on, but not the one uh, of uh, tomorrow. Well, then let me define an adapted uh, continuous process. Uh, denoted xt depending uh, on x. Uh, so this is, well, usually I write it like that. So this is a family of random variables depending uh, on uh, t. Well, uh, and taking values in m in our manifold. So what do I mean by adapted? Adapted just means for each t, this random variable should not be only f measurable, but already ft measurable. Yeah? And continuous, I just mean the process should have almost truly continuous trajectories. Yeah? So this is uh, uh, self-explaining. Uh, uh, such a process is called, or let's more precisely, I call it a flow process. Just to give you the correct generalization of a flow line or an integral curve to uh, a vector field. More commonly, it's called uh, an L diffusion. So L is an operator, for instance, of the type uh, I've written uh, up here. So to L, uh, with the uh, starting point the starting point uh, X zero of x is equal x. This is my uh, notation. Well, if, uh, what should be the condition? I try to stick as close to what I have written here. Yeah? So uh, I should take uh, functions or test functions on m 
Yes. Then I write down uh, the equivalent of the expression over here. So I write down f of x t of omega. Or, uh, well, I should, it's, I write x usually here. So this is a random variable taking values in m, compose it with a function, you get something real. So minus f of x, yes, minus some integral from 0 to t. Here I have the vector field. I told you I want to replace it by a second order differential operator, so I write L of f, x, uh, s, x, ds. Uh. So the condition here would be this vanishes identically. Uh. Here it turns out this condition is too strong. Yeah? And we are looking for uh, a good probabilistic version of this here being zero, and that means in the conditional mean it should be zero. Yeah? So it means if I denote this uh, thing here by NTF of x and consider it as a stochastic uh, process, then this should be what is called a martingale. And the martingale is a process which uh, has no systematic part. Yeah, it's pure uh, fluctuations. Yeah? So this means what? Uh, this means uh, if I take f of x dx minus f of x s x, uh, minus the integral from s to t, l of f x r x uh, dr. So this here is just my n t f x minus n s f. Then this here should be zero if I take the conditional expectation with respect to f s for each s less or equal than t. Yeah. So what does uh, uh, this mean? The, you make this random variable here measurable with respect to f s, which is a kind of projection, and then it should be zero. Yeah. Uh, maybe I say just uh, one quick word about conditional expectation. I can explain this in three minutes, so maybe I should take the time in case you have not uh, seen it uh, uh, before. Well, uh, so let's say uh, recall or reminder about conditional expectations. So suppose you have some sub-sigma algebra of a given sigma algebra. Yeah? Just means that a, that a is also a sigma algebra and contained uh, in uh, f. And now let's suppose well, this is a linear construction, yeah? So let's suppose that x is a real uh, valued random variable on our probability space. Yes? So by definition, this means that the random variable x, x is f measurable. Yeah? And we want to make the x measurable with respect to a smaller sigma algebra. So if you like, we want to put on glasses where you don't see all the details uh, which are in f, but only with respect to a coarser sigma algebra. Yeah? So we want to uh, 
define the object which I denote conditional expectation of x uh, given a. Yeah, so a priori this here should be a measurable. Yes, and of course there is a canonical way uh, how uh, to do this. So first let's suppose that x is square integrable. Yeah. So uh, just means that expectation of x square is finite. Yeah. Then you uh, take the L2 of P, which is now a Hilbert space, you uh, take L2 of P, and in this L2 space, you take the L2 of functions which are measurable with respect to the smaller uh, sigma algebra. Yeah? So I just restrict the measure to A. Yeah? This is now the L2 of omega A measure restricted to A. Yeah? And uh, obviously this is a closed subspace. Yeah? And uh, if you have a closed subspace in the Hilbert space, you have an orthogonal projection. Yeah? So if you, the idea is this here, if you take uh, L2 of pi, you have the linear subspace, which is L2 of pi restricted to A. If you have some random variable which is not A measurable, you just take the orthogonal projection onto this subspace. And this element here, you denote conditional expectation of X. So it's the best A measurable approximation, yes? Well, uh, L2, this here is, I should write it uh, explicitly, so it's uh, L2 of omega A, but with the measure P restricted to A. Yeah, so you can uh, think of it uh, just of the L2 functions, which are A measurable. Yes, this is a closed subspace, limit of A measurable things uh, is uh, again A measurable. So we have this uh, orthogonal uh, uh, projection and the defining property is that you have X minus this element here yeah, is orthogonal to a measurable uh, things. Yeah, so this here is uh, orthogonal for each a which uh, is uh, in, uh, uh, in a. Yes, so the difference here is orthogonal to things which are a measurable. Yeah. And uh, of course this, uh, so it is, uh, well, so I should say this is the orthogonal projection. And uh, this you can take as a defining uh, a property. So uh, the condition here uh, just means that if you integrate x over a, so expectation means integration with respect uh, to uh, p, then this here is the same thing than integrating the conditional expectation over a. for each A in A. 
yes? So in particular, if you integrate, if A is uh, omega, then the integral of X will be the same as the integral of the conditional expectation. Yeah? There is not much to say about uh, uh, or uh, about a conditional expectation. So here I explained it for L2, but of course uh, we can extend this uh, uh, operator to an operator operating on L1. Yeah, just by continuity. Uh, continuity. So you uh, approximate L1 function by L2 function, you uh, show it continuous, and then you get the same conditional expectation for uh, uh, functions which are integrable. Okay, so end of reminder. Now you can see what I have written here. Here I have some random variable which is, well, here is t, and t is usually bigger than s. Yeah. So this uh, will be only ft measurable. I make it fs measurable, then it's zero. Okay? Well, uh, martingales, uh, as I said, are uh, uh, important notion in stochastic analysis because they describe uh, 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 dynamics which is only governed by pure random. So if I would, if I would uh, use the example xt is uh, the weather at time t yeah? and if I give the best approximation of uh, the weather of tomorrow. So I would have to take the xt for tomorrow, taking conditional expectation given all observations of today. Yeah? And if it's a martingale, the best prediction would be the weather tomorrow will be as it's today. Yeah? I cannot uh, uh, say more. Yeah? Okay, so uh, let's accept this uh, definition. Of course, one can define whatever one wants, uh, but I will show you that this is really uh, a good and powerful definition. So uh, let me start with some, some obvious uh, observations. <coughs> so we have uh, this uh, uh, object, uh, well here you can still see it, NTF of X. And the condition was uh, this is uh, a martingale, so it's clear if I take expectations, yeah, it will be the same as the expectation of the process at time zero because of this averaging property. Yeah? But this here is zero. Yeah. So uh, this opt if I take expectations, it does not uh, depend uh, on uh, t. So what does that mean? And that means I have f x t x. I have expectation uh, here uh, equals f of x yeah, plus integral zero t l or expectation l of f uh, x s x uh, ds. Yeah? I just rewrite the expectation here and I know it's zero, so I have this equation. Okay? Uh, usually this is called pt of f 
at the point X. This is a semi-group generated by uh, this uh, process. I come to this uh, later. But here you can see immediately, well, first, uh, there is no longer an ugly term which would prevent us uh, to differentiate the PTF. Yes? because it's just integral zero uh, to uh, t. And what you get is, this is the expectation of L of f x t x. Yeah, or if you like, we find the formula that dt p f is the same as L f p t applied to this. Yeah. Well, this is, uh, so here uh, it's, uh, well, I have expectation of uh, the integral, yeah, but this is just uh, Fubini, yeah? It's everything is bounded positive, yeah? There's no, there's no, nothing deep going on here, that's, that's trivial, yeah? Okay, uh, so in particular, this means if I have this, uh, a, a semi-group, well, I will explain later the notion, and I take a derivative at t equals zero, I get back my differential operator, yeah? just as before with a vector field, yes? Uh, so here I have this is, uh, you take expectation f of x tx, derivative with respect to t. Well, I told you this xt depends uh, not nice as function of t, but you see here, if I take the average, yeah, then it's nice in t. Yeah? And then I have the property I had before for uh, our vector fields. Yeah? Okay, so you agree so far? Well, uh, before uh, uh, going further, I should make some uh, or indicate some uh, technical things which are not very important, but they will show up uh, later on. As you remember, for uh, already for uh, for a vector field, usually you don't have. Uh, uh, globally defined flow. Yeah? So you cannot expe expect this here because the case of a vector field is covered just by ignoring the second order uh, part. So uh, our, what I called flow process starting uh, at x uh, may, may only be defined not for all, uh, not for all R, not on the complete uh, real line, but up to some random time now. And usually this will be a maximal time, so I cannot extend the flow uh, uh, longer. And it's called stopping time, so this is just a random time. Uh, for us, which I denote theta of x. Yeah? So this will be the lifetime of the process when uh, starting at uh, uh, x. And so I have a stochastic process defined only 
on this uh, random interval from zero to this uh, uh, lifetime uh, theta uh, x. And by maximal, I mean the following. On the set where the lifetime is finite, so this is a set of omegas, yeah, where uh, uh, the uh, lifetime uh, is finite. This should be included in the set where x t of x limit as t goes uh, to, if you approach the lifetime, uh, this will be infinite. Yeah? In the one point compactification of M. Yeah. So uh, the lifetime, this is part of my definition, can be only uh, finite if the corresponding process uh, goes to infinity. Yeah? And obviously, here you have no chance to extend uh, it uh, anymore. So if you like, you can take, uh, let's say, uh, an exhaustion of M by uh, relatively, by open, relatively compact uh, sets, then we would have the lifetime when uh, starting at X, would be the supremum of exit times from uh, un, so where tau uh, n of x is the first time uh, greater or equal than zero, where x t of x is no longer in un. Yeah, so you can stop it, you start in some point x and you stop it when you exit uh, uh, un and then the tau ends are increasing and you take the limit or the supremum and this is the, la the maximal lifetime of uh, my uh, diffusion. Well, as I said, I will not have these problems if I scalarize uh, things uh, by functions of uh, compact support. So if uh, I look at this object here, I don't have to worry about, uh, about uh, lifetime. This here will be a martingale if F has compact support. Yeah, because once uh, I'm out, uh, well, if there is explosion, it will happen outside the support of F. So there is no uh, trouble with that. But if I write down the same thing here for F only uh, C infinity, I will get what people call a local martingale, which means you can stop it as late as you like and you have a true martingale. Yeah? So you stop this process when uh, 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 it's exit, when it's too getting too big or exiting some UN, then you have a true martingale. So this is a local martingale then. Yeah? Okay, so maybe before Going on, let me give you a first example. Well, so what is uh, the, uh, the most canonical second order differential operator, well, it's certainly Laplacian on uh, Rn. So L will be Laplacian. And since I'm a probabilist, all my Laplacians come with the factor of one half. Yeah? Uh, you will see later why this is uh, the 
the case, uh, but uh, there are two communities. Yeah, you cannot convince either one by adopting the uh, notation of the others, and so there is always this question about one half or factor two, and so on. And um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, I guess uh, you know that there is an object Bt which is called Brownian motion on Rn. Yeah. And uh, so this is a, a process starting at uh, zero. So we can let it start at x just by shifting uh, uh, by uh, x, uh, and then there is a famous formula, which is Ito's formula, which tells you uh, what you get if you apply a function to such uh, a process. So let me just skip the x. Yeah, so uh, x uh, t is a Brownian motion starting at x, and uh, you apply uh, a function uh, f, which is c2 or c infinity on Rn. Yeah, then Ito tells you you get two parts. One is a martingale part, and one is a drift. Uh, a part, and uh, well, uh, it tells you this is f of x uh, zero plus, and uh, then there is a, a, a random part which is a gradient of f uh, x s dx s. Well, this is actually a stochastic integral. Don't worry about if you, uh, you have not seen it before, but xs is a Brownian motion, though this here will be a martingale. Yeah? But there is an additional term which writes as Laplacian of f xs ds. Yes? And so this is Laplacian applied to f, x, s, and integrated uh, from a zero to t. Yeah. So in other words, it tells you that if you have a Brownian motion, you apply a C2 functions, you don't get a martingale. Brownian motion is a martingale, but you get a mixture of two terms. You get some drift part where the Laplacian comes in, and you get some martingale part. Don't worry about this, uh, but what does uh, this mean uh, for us? Uh? This means if you take f of x t minus f of x uh, zero minus integral from zero to t, so here I forgot the one half, uh, one half Laplacian uh, of f x s uh, ds, then this here equals my stochastic integral. And I told you this is a martingale. Yes? So uh, this process here is a martingale yeah? uh, for every f, uh, well, let's take uh, compact support, doesn't matter here, Rn. Yeah? And in other words, this means uh, that, that xt, Brownian motion shifted uh, by x, is a flow process or an L diffusion to the operator L equals one half Laplacian. Yeah? So we have already one example yeah, of uh, such a, a, a stochastic flow. Yeah, that would be Brownian motion. 
And uh, so uh, starting with the original or going back to the original idea, I asked, well, is given a second order operator, is uh, there a flow? Well, I gave you a definition and with this uh, definition, Brownian motion would just be a corresponding flow to one half of the Laplacian. Uh, of course, not as random variable, but in distribution, it's unique. Yeah? Well, for instance, if you take a Brownian motion, let's say on R, then minus of the Brownian motion is also a Brownian motion. Yeah? Or if you have Brownian motion on Rn and you rotate it, yeah, it's still a Brownian motion. Yeah? But the distribution does not change. Yeah? But I, I did not talk about neither about uniqueness nor about existence. Yeah? So I just uh, uh, explained the notion what uh, I like to think of uh, generalization of flow lines to flow processes. Yeah? That was uh, up to now all I did. <laughs> Well, uh, you may ask uh, uh, natural questions. What are L diffusions uh, good for? So why should we waste our time by looking at uh, such uh, things? Uh? And uh, I will give you some examples uh, where I only assume that I have such an object I called uh, a stochastic flow to a second order operator. I, even if you don't know how to construct it or whatever, let's suppose for a moment we are given an operator L of Hermann the form sum of squares plus vector field and so on. And pfft, I can do it more generally, but let's stick to this case. And suppose you have such an object I called L diffusion. What can you do uh, with that? Okay, so our first example is the Dirichlet problem. So what is the, uh, the Dirichlet problem? You uh, take some uh, domain uh, in uh, M, let's say open, uh, connected, and relatively compact. And since we are in France, I should say it should not be empty, so no one complains about that. And let's say it should also not be all of M, so we have some uh, boundary, and let's give us a continuous, well, yeah, continuous function on the boundary. Yeah, and the Dirichlet problem, as uh, you all know, well, so let's uh, suppose L is a second order partial differential operator, uh, as uh, you like, and the Dirichlet problem is the following problem. Find uh, a function which is continuous uh, on uh, d bar, on the closure, and uh, differentiable, uh, let's say, c infinity uh, on d, such that, well, such that uh, uh, L of u is L harmonic, so L of u is zero on d, yeah? and u on the boundary should have the prescribed uh, boundary conditions. Yeah. So this is classical problem. Yeah. Uh, 
Now let's suppose suppose uh, there exists uh, an L diffusion. as explained, so for each x, the stochastic process, and so on, having the property I've uh, given. Okay, this was, that's a bit confusing. This was number two. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, well, so I'm not making any assumptions, neither on my manifold, neither on my uh, domain, neither on L and so on. I only uh, assume that I have uh, such an L diffusion. And then I do a small construction, namely I exhaust my uh, domain uh, D by open uh, subsets such that dn closure is still contained uh, in uh, d. And uh, I look at the tor uh, random time uh, tor nx, which will be the first time when my process starting in x will exit uh, dn. Well, if uh, x is in dn, I have to wait a bit, uh, and uh, uh, it's well defined, so remember my process has continuous uh, pass, and uh, well, if x is not in dn, then it's uh, zero uh, by uh, definition, so let's make a picture here. We have uh, d, and here we have some smaller part dn, I take uh, some uh, x, now I let my process uh, start here and at some point it will try uh, to uh, get out and here is, this happens, I'm starting at x at the time tau n of x. Yeah. Okay, uh, this here obviously uh, is uh, growing to tau of x, uh, which will be the exiting time uh, of uh, d. x d of x is no longer in d. It can, of course, uh, be uh, infinite, but at the moment uh, uh, we don't worry about that. Okay, now let's suppose we already have a solution to our Dirichlet problem. What, how can we think of this in probabilistic terms? Yeah? So let U be a solution to the Dirichlet problem. Well, now you will see why I'm so picky with the ends and so on, because uh, the point is uh, I use the test functions uh, in my definition, so I will uh, construct functions un, which have compact uh, support uh, such that such that u n on d n is the same as u on d n, yeah, but uh, such that the support of u n is uh, still included in d. Yeah, this will help me to apply directly my uh, defining 
property. Well, what do I know? I know if I take such a function, yes, I substitute my diffusion, then if you remember, I had to subtract its value at zero. Then first I had to uh, subtract this integral from zero uh, to t l of u n uh, x uh, r x uh, dr. Yeah, and the condition was this here is uh, for t greater or equal than zero is a martingale. Yeah, why? This is my definition of uh, uh, L diffusion. Yeah, so this I know because U N are have compact support. So I just use the definition. Okay. Well, now let's suppose that we start in uh, T N. Yeah. So let me to simplify. Let me call this N. T of x. This process is a martingale. Uh, now I'm stopping this martingale at the first time when it exits at the n. So I look at n t inf to n uh, x. Yeah. So this is just the, the minimum of t and to n x. So I stop it. Uh, on the boundary of uh, dn, then uh, this writes as u n uh, x. Okay, I have now a lot of indices. To n x minus u n of x minus integral from zero to t inf to n x l of u n x r x uh, dr. Yeah? This here is a martingale as well. It's a general observation. If you have a martingale and you stop it at some stopping time, it's still a martingale. But now, if if x is in dn, yeah, then x r x up to the first exit in time will also be in dn. Yeah? But on dn, my u n equals u, yeah? and L of u is zero. Yeah? So this here will be zero. Yes? Okay, but uh, in the same way, here uh, I said the x is in u n, so this here will be just u of x, yeah. And uh, uh, here, this uh, is uh, okay. This is u of x t inf to x. Yes, but I know it's a martingale, so as I explained before, if I take expectation of this uh, guy here, uh, t inf to n x, uh, yes, this here does not depend on t, so it's expectation of n uh, zero x, 
which by definition is zero. Yeah? So I immediately recover the formula that u of x writes as expectation u of x t inf tau uh, and x starting at x. Yeah? But uh, this is true for each n, because the left-hand side does not depend on n. So I can take the limit on the right-hand side. Yeah? So I take limit as n goes to infinity, uh, uh, yes, of uh, this thing here. U is bounded because we are in a relatively compact domain, so I can exchange expectation and limit. I can take uh, the limit uh, uh, inside. Well, but if I take the limit inside, what happens here? Yeah, the tau n will increase to the first exiting time of the process uh, from uh, from uh, t. So let me make here an hypothesis, which is crucial. Suppose that tau of x is finite, almost surely for each x in M, yeah? which means our process uh, has the property that in finite time the trajectory will exit the domain D. Yeah? I will come to an interpretation of uh, this uh, condition later, but then if uh, this uh, here is finite and uh, 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 I can uh, uh, okay. Let's uh, see. Um, I uh, ship uh, first. Uh, well, uh, I can uh, ship first uh, t uh, to uh, infinity and uh, then uh, n uh, uh, to uh, infinity. So let's. Okay, I should. Uh, write it uh, properly. So, okay, if I take the limit inside, I get x uh, t inf tau of x. Yeah, so actually here I'm, okay, I'm sorry, I'm a bit... I should do it step by step. Here I'm not using any hypothesis at first. Here I'm just using the fact that tau n of x uh, goes to tau of x and that x has uh, continuous trajectories. Yeah? So now I have no n anymore here. Yeah? And the next step is this is also independent of t. So now I let t go to infinity. And here I'm using that tau of x is almost surely finite. Yes? So now the hypothesis uh, is that tau of x is finite almost surely. And then I see what? Uh, I see. <laughs> Well, uh, so I uh, take uh, the limit inside, it's no problem because everything is bounded. So at uh, some point, the t will be bigger than the tau of x. Yeah? So I have u of x tau of x. Yes? And this is interesting because what does that mean? Well, now my variable is sitting on the boundary, yeah? And my u on the boundary equals phi. So this here is nothing than phi of x to x expectation. Yeah? So if you like, this is nothing than an integral over the boundary of the boundary function with respect 
to some measure mu x. And what is mu x? Mu x is uh, the exiting measure for my process. So mu x is a measure on the boundary and it's uh, defined as the probability that my process starting in x will exit uh, the domain via A. A in the boundary of D measurable. Nothing, nothing at all. Yeah, so the, my, my measure is what uh, I have here uh, D and my process is starting somewhere. I fix a set A in the boundary and I'm looking at the probability that my process will exit D through this boundary uh, set. Yeah, this gives me a measure on the boundary and you see here, if I have a solution to my Dirichli problem, it's uniquely determined yeah, by this formula u of x, yeah, I must you well, this is uniqueness, yeah? But nevertheless, it's interesting because it tells you no matter what d is, yeah? No assumption on d, no assumption on l, can be as degenerate as it may be, yeah? If there is a solution, it is of this form here, yeah? So let me uh, 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 notice what we learned from this uh, example. Well, we had uh, the hypothesis, that was the only hypothesis in my uh, argument. If I start in X, then the exiting time should be finite. So in finite time I should exit my uh, domain for each x in d. Yeah. Then uh, if u, uh, u is a solution to the Dirichle problem, then necessarily u of x uh, is given by the formula you start your diffusion, let it run until you hit the boundary. On the boundary you have the prescribed boundary data, then take expectation. Yeah. So we get uniqueness for solutions of the Dirichlet problem. Of course, uh, this condition here, I come back to it later, it means the operator is not allowed to be too degenerate. Yes? But uh, if there is a solution, it's always uh, given by, by uh, this formula. Well, you may say, uh, why are we not Yeah. No, here I just said uh, a, classical a classical solution, yeah. Well, uh, it was uh, just, uh, so I said, the uh, Dirichli problem for me means L of U is zero uh, on D and on the boundary it is phi and U was supposed to be uh, uh, continuous on the closure. Uh, 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, I uh, yes. So I'm. Uh, my assumption is, if I have such a solution, then it and I have this probabilistic condition u of x is given by this form. Yeah, and of course, uh, this is also a formula you can use to calculate u of x. You just simulate uh, uh, the process, let it start in x and sufficiently many trajectories, and then you calculate this random variable, and this is what's called the Monte Carlo uh, method. Well, uh, so you may say, why are we not just defining u of x uh, by this formula? Uh, this you can always do, of course. This is a well-defined object, but it may not have the right boundary conditions. Yeah? And uh, you get the right boundary conditions if you have the following hypothesis, namely that tau of x, which is the exiting time when you start uh, at x, goes to zero in a weak uh, sense uh, in probability uh, as you approach, uh, as you let x go uh, to the boundary. Yeah, so you look at uh, the exiting time when starting in x and now you move x closer and closer to the boundary and my hypothesis is this should go to zero in a weak sense in probability. Yeah? Then you can uh, easily check if you define u of x by our uh, formula here, phi of x so x of x, yeah, this here, so this is just now a definition, this object always has the right uh, boundary uh, conditions, so as x goes to the boundary, you will find the correct boundary uh, conditions. And uh, so the only problem is show uh, that, that u is uh, uh, differentiable if you are interested in classical solutions and L of u is zero, but this is always okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly, yeah. So this is exactly the, the case. So this here is a condition on the regularity of the boundary. Yeah? And uh, the, this condition is a condition that the operator is not uh, too degenerate. Yeah? Okay, maybe. Uh, let's look at some examples. Example, well, for instance, uh, take uh, M, uh, the punctured plane, so R2 minus uh, the origin, and take for L uh, the operator uh, twice derivative with respect to the angle, yeah, which is certainly a degenerate operator. Yeah. Now take as d uh, a domain or an analysis in R2, 
So here was zero, take here R1, here radius uh, R2, zero less than R1, less than R2, and uh, this here is my domain. Yes? So it's, uh, well, it's the x in R2 such that x modulus is between R1 and R2. Yeah? Well, uh, of course, uh, you see immediately if uh, u uh, is a solution uh, to the Dirichlet problem, in the sense I uh, described it, then u plus any radial function, any function which uh, depends uh, only on uh, the radius, Uh, such that uh, v of r1 equals uh, v of r2 equals uh, zero is also a solution. Yes, so uniqueness uh, fails of uh, obviously uh, in uh, this uh, case. Uh, so my first hypothesis must uh, be violated, and uh, this is easy to see. So, for instance, if x is in uh, d, modulus of x uh, is uh, r, then look at the r uh, sphere. So, the uh, s, yeah, let me denote it just s r, the x in r2 such that absolute value of x uh, equals r, and we let our L diffusion start in this point x. Yeah? And the L is just second derivative. Yeah? So it's uh, easy to uh, check that our flow process starting in x here will be nothing but the one-dimensional Brownian motion on S R, yeah, because you uh, just uh, think of one uh, uh, this uh, Brownian you let the Brownian motion on R, uh, uh, or you take a one-dimensional Brownian motion and let it run on uh, uh, S R. You see immediately it satisfies the conditions we had for a stochastic flow to this operator here. Yeah? And uh, this means, uh, of uh, course, that tau of x yeah, will never exit the domain because it stays on SR, yeah? which shows trivially that my uh, first uh, condition uh, uh, is not satisfied. Well, <laughs> Yes? No, okay, wait. Uh, I'm, not take, I'm not talking about Brownian motion. My L is not the Laplace. For the usual one, of course, you can solve uh, the... 
uh, 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 here, yeah? Uh, yes, yeah, for, for Brownian motion, there's no problem. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what? <laughs> the first time. No, there is. Okay, uh, just to uh, uh, finish, let's let's look at the, uh, the following example, take m equal uh, r2 and let, uh, let L be the degenerate operator which is a second derivative with respect to the first coordinate. Okay? And take as D a domain uh, in R2 as follows. So like uh, this here, it should be uh, nicely uh, symmetric. And so here we have some uh, point uh, uh, A. And so if X is uh, in uh, D, you have the coordinates x1, uh, x2, uh, and uh, you will, uh, well, this only operates on the first uh, coordinate, so my flow uh, process is nothing else than standard uh, Brownian motion on R, uh, across x2. Yeah? So if I start here, it will stay on this horizontal line. It will, if I'm here in the middle, it will exit with probability one half here or with probability one half there. Yeah? But now you see if, uh, so uh, your uh, 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 u of x will be one half uh, the value here, one half the value there. But now let your x uh, go to the point A. Yeah? No matter how close you are uh, to A, yeah, your motion will only be in the horizontal direction. Yeah? So tau of x will not go to zero yeah? if you approach this A here. Yeah? So you can uh, immediately see there exists a solution uh, to the Dirichlet problem if and only if, uh, take the two points here, if uh, phi of A equals phi of B plus phi of C half. Yeah, otherwise, you will not be able to fulfill the boundary conditions. Yeah? And the reason is that tau of x does not go to zero when you approach the boundary along this line here. Okay? Okay, I think my time is... Uh, up, uh, I started to write one as uh, uh, motivations example. So the second example, the first was Dirichlet problem. The second would be heat equation. Uh, see whether I still have time tomorrow to come back. Uh, but for the moment, I uh, just to uh, repeat the argument again. I was not assuming anything except that I have such an object called uh, L diffusion. Yeah? And you see, I can immediately say something about classical PDE problems. Yeah? Okay, thanks. Here.
Ja. Yes. Well, here the problem. Yes. Yeah. Well, I uh, yes. If uh, that was uh, I wrote upstairs. So if uh, the exiting time is uh, finite, then I always have uniqueness. That's clear. Yeah. And the second point was, uh, if I define my U by this formula, yeah, then I have to worry about uh, the, the, the boundary behavior. And that was my condition that tau of x has to go to zero. Yeah, so. yeah, so the second point... Uh, yes. Uh, no, wait, wait. wait uh. If you are the test, so you are under a virtual school, then necessarily you are going to Yes, I think so, but I have to, to work it out. Uh, uh, so, uh, well, I, I think so, I can uh, modify, but that's not the argument I gave, yeah? yeah. So the second point here would uh, correspond to existence and the first to uniqueness. And all I'm saying here is, uh, if I have this hypothesis, then I have uniqueness. But I think uh, uh, if it's not exiting uh, in finite time, I will not be able to solve the Dirichlet problem. But I, I have to think about it. It's it's not not completely clear. Yeah.